Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Max Hunt is after a black roebuck. We've got the regulars. Hunting YouTube, calendar, new stump. First, it's Crow How. Every cloud has a silver lining. Crow had a puncture this morning, so hasn't been able to finish ploughing in his bean stubble. He's hoping the few acres left could provide some reasonable sport. He's also relieved to get out of the cab. I'm going to make the most of it this afternoon. If I shoot 20, I'll be happy. If I shoot 50, 60, I'll be happy, sir. It doesn't matter how many I shoot. It's just nice to get out of the tractor cab for a few hours and, and do something I like doing. It's a case of mixing the old with the new today. Not having any fresh birds to use as decoys, he's got some antiques to mix in with the flock-coated deeks from A1. Old plastic full-bodied decoys, uh, originally my granddad's and my uncle's. Um, I've only got, I suppose I've got about a dozen of them, 15 of them. Um, I've had them years. You see they've got pellet holes in them, they got, they're broken. Um, but all these are for just to attract their attention and bring them in close enough to get a few for decoys really. Another bit of kit he's playing with today is a new hide net from A1. Now you see him, now you don't. Well, just like the old army camo really. Um, and what I like about it, it's got green backing. Um, most of them have got black backing which I'm not a lover of, um, but it does the job. But this has got green so i um, got that to try out today. Uh, but I always put double net anyway so I'm going to stick this over the top of my, my original net. So, and see how it goes, but it looks good. The first bird of the day means that Andy can put out a floater for some movement. He's worried we're just not catching their eye at the moment. But Crowman's capable of hijacking them mid-flight, and to show that that wasn't a fluke... That's really the only action we've had in the first 45 minutes, and if things don't get better soon, Crow's off to see if we should be elsewhere on the farm. I'm getting my truck and going up on the other field. Yeah. Um, seems to be there's another field further over there going to. There seems to be bypassing us, but just had had a couple a bit quick, so let's see what happens. That's when you want a dog. Finally, we get one decoying, but the majority of stuff is heading elsewhere. Happily, Crow's bionic sends ear defenders means he can hear the birds dropping into the wood. Down. Yes. Yes. You can hear that with the new heads then. Okay, yeah, look at it coming down through. I wish I'd had a music. You often hear pigeon shooters talking about the birds turning off and on. At about two o'clock, the birds turn on. It's getting a bit later in the day, they're starting to get a bit hungry now. Um, with beans, it doesn't take long to get a crop full, so they tend to sit in the trees for, for most of the day. The old Lincoln, it don't fit me very well, but I know one thing, I'm shooting it well. I'm shooting, I'm really pleased with my shooting with it. Um, yeah, considering I haven't shot for a while, and I've had some real nice long shots with it. The cartridges are going well too, I'm using plain boy with those clear pigeons, and they're, well, those last couple I've shot, they've been, been nice shots. The rain starts to fall, and so do the birds. Crow can now build up the pattern, leaving a hole in the middle where he wants the birds to aim for. Well, that's the theory. Many still need to be intercepted. And Andy is making some good shots. Oh, I just had yes. two there. They must have been 80 yards plus. And stone dead. 
I surprised myself really, but I was pleased with them, the ones you remember. But obviously wasn't luck because I had two of them. I did it twice, so just you weren't filming it, Dave. It's always fascinating to see just what the birds have been feasting on. The crop is full of beans, nearly 30 of them, One, two, with room three, to spare. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Andy did the honourable thing and told the gamekeeper we'd be shooting today. Not that the pheasants are bothered in the slightest. Set two shots at pigeons, um, probably 40 yards, 50 yards away. I've got a dozen, dozen, 15 pheasants, got some hen pheasants feeding on the beans. Uh, they're not taking any notice of the shooting. Um, it's early season, so it's not doing any problems, but later on in the season, once they've been shot out a few times, it's, it's a bit of a different story then, but you want it? But at the moment, they're, they're pretty chilled out about things. We call it a day with a bag of 60 woodies. One of the last birds we shoot has a crop full, so crow becomes a bean counter. And can you guess how many it can hold? The grand total is 91. That's not a crop, that's a TARDIS. Well, birds are a favourite of Andy Crow there, and if you want to see more of his videos, Crow How series, click on the image that's appearing up there above my shoulder. Somebody else who attracts birds, David, on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. A video uploaded to YouTube two years ago has become the subject of an angry attack by Antis. Mr Blubber's bullet man, that's his YouTube handle, went out to shoot deer on his farm, but his cattle scared them away. It's the Antis assertion that they did it on purpose because they're in league with the deer. Anti-gun campaigners have hit a new low. In the wake of the US Navy Yard shooting, an American professor says he hopes the children of the National Rifle Association members will be the next victims of a mass shooting. David Guff, a journalism professor, has been suspended by the University of Kansas for his offensive tweet. An urban photographer from Amsterdam has shot a portfolio of images showing the beauty of hunting rituals from across the world. Photographer Isabella Rosendahl's series, Isabella Hunts, shows gorgeous images wrapped up in the thrill and drama of hunting. Rosendahl embarked on the project in 2009 and expects to continue until 2015. As part of her work, she enrolled in a six-month hunter's education program and followed hunts across USA and Germany. Don't fall asleep while you're fishing. Three anglers have been fined by Chelmsford Magistrates Court in Essex for fishing illegally, two of them with unattended rods. They were found sleeping and unable to attend their rods should they hook a fish, an offence designed to promote animal welfare. News from the internet now. There's a new forum set up by shooters in Northern Ireland, and Eddie Nash from the Lamping Foxes group on Facebook has come up with a new fox caller. Search for Lamping Foxes on Facebook for more. And finally, when is 50p worth £2? Well, it's the 50p commemorating the London 2012 Olympics. Peter Wilson's gold medal success has helped push the price of the 50p up to £2 on eBay, including postage. Thanks to Peter Lockerbie for sending this in. You are now up to date with Phil Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Very real. Now let's see what the real, real people have been up to. It's Hello Charlie. Here's what the world's up to this week. Hello Charlie, it's the Crow Hunter. You are in for a treat today. I'm sitting here in the West Plains of Africa shooting buffaloes with my shotgun. Not really. I'm actually here in Northern Ireland and still there's no pigeons to be seen. Hello Charlie, this is this man's first hike ever <laughs> on the Blackwater River in Northern Ireland. Send us your own Hello Charlie, film yourself on your mobile phone, just a sentence saying Hello Charlie, who you are and what you're up to. Then share it or email it via YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox or you send it, you name it, to charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now, last week I said that Max Hunt was on his way to Kazakhstan. He points out it's actually Kyrgyzstan. Well, you know, Uzbekistan, Pakistan, Stansted, whatever am I bothered. Let's uh, look at what he's been doing in Germany. He's been after a black roebuck, mysterious and comes with a curse. I just finalised one of my dreams, 
Uh, robot hunting has always been one of my favorite hunts, but trying to get a black robot as they are here in Germany, in the part of Germany, has always been one of my biggest dreams. Um, last week I went hunting in mecklenburg vorpommern that's the eastern part of Germany, and I spoke to a very good friend of mine and hunted for a very old robot with him. He had a good contact over here between Hamburg and Bremen in the western part, north northwest of Germany, and knew a guy who had a very confirmed a very old robot, uh, black robot. So we made it here and we spotted uh, this decent robot and uh, as we had just in front of the rut right now, the robots are very active, they pass a lot, they run for the females. So we spotted him and we saw him like 20 seconds and I had the opportunity to give him a perfect shot just before he entered into the woods. So perfect morning in Germany. Ian. Warum wird Trevel schwarz? Da weiß man noch relativ wenig. Man vermutet eine Mutation, also eine Veränderung der Erbanlagen, die allerdings äh, rezessiv vererbt wird. Das heißt, ähm, die Rotfärbung, die normale Färbung, wird dominant vererbt. Schwarzes Rehwild ist sicher keine eigene Art, weil es kommt sicher nur in ganz geringen Mengen vor. Man kann sich auch mit dem Rehwild, mit roten Rehwild vererben. Also das heißt, wenn sich ein roter Bock mit der roten Ricke vererbt, gibt es rote Kitze. Ja, und ein rotes, ein schwarzes oder vielleicht zwei schwarze, zwei rote, da passiert wenig. Also schwarzes Rehwild gibt es hauptsächlich in Norddeutschland, im Raum zwischen Hamburg und Bremen, im Raum Lüchow-Dannberg. Man vermutet, dass es seit etwa 1000 Jahren dort vorkommt schon. Also dass man nur schwarzes Rehwild im Revier hat, das ist sicher nicht möglich, weil ähm, ich kenne keine Zahlen, wie viele in Deutschland erlegt werden oder in Norddeutschland ist mir unbekannt, wie viel schwarzes Rehwild. Aber Fakt ist, schwarzes Rehwild kommt immer nur in sehr geringer Menge vor, was es wie gesagt nur rezessiv vererbt. Also merkt man das sicher, man könnte ja vermuten, dass das Schwarze äh, kleiner ist, aufgrund schon von der Sommer, von der Wärme, dass es einfach ähm, kleiner ist. Ist aber nicht der Fall. Ich kenne durchaus Böcke, die, die, die 20 Kilo wiegen, also durchaus normal wie, wie das rote Rehwild. Und auch ansonsten, die, die Farbe ist ihm sehr auffällig natürlich, im Winter etwas matter als im Sommer und ansonsten Größe äh, entspricht dem des roten Rehwildes. Auch im Winter sicher der Spiegel nicht der typisch weiße Spiegel, die weiße Rückseite wie bei unserem roten äh, Rehwild eben, sondern viel dunkler. Und dadurch natürlich weniger gut auffällig und auch sicher schwieriger anzusprechen im Winter auf der Drückjagd, um die Schürze zu sehen. Also Mythen zum schwarzen Rehwild sind mir persönlich keine bekannt. Im Gegenteil, also beim, beim weißen Wild wird man immer versuchen, dieses nicht zu erlegen, weil der Aberglaube sagt, man wird im selben Jahr noch sterben werden. Ein weißes äh, Stück Wild, Schalenwild erlegt, beim schwarzen Rehwild ist sogar so, die werden eher gesucht und sind bekehrt als äh, Jagdtrophäe oder als Jagdwild. Now, if you are an atypical viewer, you'll be sitting at home, twiddling your thumbs, wondering what to do. Well, here is the map that matters. It's calendar. Welcome to Field Sports, Britain's calendar in association with Basque, with dates for your diary, facts for Facebook, smartphone and post-it notes. The weather is looking good for field sportsters in the UK this week. High pressure is sitting right on top of us, so a chance for the last few trout on the rivers as the insect life dies off. Perfect deer stalking conditions and no need to waterproof the back of the car for the dog when you go game shooting. Moon reaches its third quarter on Friday the 27th of September and thereafter its waning crescent. The new moon is on the 5th of October, making that a good weekend for wildfowling. 1st of October is the opening day of the UK pheasant season and for woodcock across the UK, except Scotland. The pheasant shooting season will not warm up until the end of the month and the woodcock will not really get going until the second moon in November. There are a lot of events to look forward to on the basket calendar in the UK in the coming week. There's a gun dog training day at St. Clair's in Carmarthenshire on Thursday the 26th of September. On Friday the 27th, there's a shooting safety officer course at Green Quarry Shooting Ground in Cumbria. 
and Young Shots events at Mid Wales Shooting Centre and Forfar in Scotland on Saturday and Sunday. Next week, there's a ladies shooting event at Mendip in Somerset. For more, visit the Basque website and click on the events tab, basque.org.uk. Right, are you in Oxfordshire or Buckinghamshire this Saturday the 28th of September? The Oxford Gun Company has an open day and it's now become a mini game fair. There'll be stands, displays, activities, free entry, ample parking and refreshment throughout the day. Visit oxfordguncompany.co.uk. And finally, if you're not in Oxfordshire, maybe you're in the USA. It's National Hunting and Fishing Day. Visit nhfday.org. To the wider world of hunting, shooting and fishing on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. We start in the Southern Hemisphere. Air Arms Hunting SA is dove hunting and explaining how he does it. He's in South Africa with an Air Arms S510 after two local agricultural pests, red eye turtle doves and laughing doves. Staying under the Southern Cross, Gary Flockhart sends us this film by Aussie Bush Harvest. Bloody big deer shot and not a bad story, says Gary, though with an Australian accent. This fellow is Australian. He's impressive, but he is clearly a Wild man Andrew Uckles comes across emu roadkill and uses his find to intercept a troop of eastern grey kangaroo. He disguises himself as an emu in order to catch a roo. Simples. Staying in Oz, now to the Whitsunday Islands in the heart of the Great Barrier Reef where Andy Thompson is sight casting for what they call salmon, real name Threadfin, Mangrove Jack, also known as Red Snapper, and Estuary Cod. Now whatever you think of bow fishing, you'll be impressed by this footage from Snow Sick in Michigan, USA. It's really good use of a GoPro camera. Wild French hunter gets in touch to tell me about his channel. Is that Chanel? No, I think it's Canal. Dedicated to chasing wild boar, deer, fox and roe. New videos two Fridays a month. Wild fowling is underway across Europe. Wilt Jäger is duck shooting in Germany, taking 69 birds in about two and a half hours of hunting. Finally, most people go there for the sun and the sand. Safari Jensen offers hunting and fishing in Mauritius. Here is a short film about one of his trips fishing and stalking local rooster deer. You can click on any of these films to watch them if you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly Top 8, send it in via YouTube or email me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week and this has been our 200th episode, so please make a special effort to subscribe or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, click the like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter or scroll down to the bottom of the page, pop your email address into the constant contact box so we can email you about our fabulous programme. This has been Field Sports Britain.